Thomas here with Mudge Profs, gonna give you another how-to video. Today I am building something from the Hogwarts Legacy game. It released about a week ago and I was looking for different things that I could possibly build from the game. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but I have watched a few people on YouTube playing it and showcasing it. And I went and looked at a bunch of the different things that are on there as far as clothes and weapons and you know, the wands and masks. And of course I gravitated towards one of the masks that I thought looked pretty cool. It is the beaked bird mask. Um, I, I think that's what it's called. I, like I said, I haven't played it yet, but today that's what we're gonna build from the Hogwarts Legacy game, a mask. Let's get to building. Free template in the description. When I started building this mask, the game had only been out for a couple of days, so I was kind of limited to the reference images that I had, especially since I don't have the game. I got some decent front and side views. The front was okay, the side view was a little bit fuzzy, so to build out the mask, I'm using the tried and true foil and duct tape method. On the mannequin head, I tape clumps of foil, manipulating them into a general shape that I want, and then building layer upon layer, I guess. With a little practice, this method makes bulking out the base of your sculpture pretty easy. You could also use this same method for sculpting with clay or other materials like warbler. Once I'm happy with the foil base, I add one more piece of foil over the whole design and begin layering on duct tape. This will lock the foil into place and allow me to pull it off without distorting the shape. If you have some areas that are a little loose, you can hit it quickly with a heat gun or blow torch it to shrink the vinyl down around the base and make a snug fit. Since the mask is symmetrical, I'm only going to template out one side. So I draw a line down the center of the skull to cut on. After making hundreds of templates, you can kind of get a feel for where things need to be separated. My general rule of thumb is anywhere with a sharp or complex shape or curve should be divided. Make note of how parts line up by adding registration marks along those cutout lines. Label them with names, I generally call them the parts of the body that they lay on, and mark if it needs a duplicate or an inverse. Usually I do it with a L or an R or a times and then the number I need. Once you have the initial marks, cut it off of the dummy, then you can add in the darts where parts are not laying down flat.
I like to trace my duct tape pattern onto poster board so that it's easier to, for you to see and sturdier to trace onto materials. Make sure that you trace the outline of the pattern and include your registration marks, labels, and any other pattern aids that you'll need for later. When I first started making patterns, I would take a picture of it before I cut it off the dummy to help me figure out the areas that I need angle cuts. Now I can kind of do it in my head and for the most part get at least within the ballpark that I need it. I highlight the edges on my patterns and color code them to make it easier for me to figure out. Blue for me usually means an angle cut inward and a green means an angle cut outward. I include a cover page that explains the markings on my builds. Now it's time to trace the pattern onto my materials. Here I'm using some 6mm EVA foam. I make sure to mark parts with an L or an R to keep my side straight. A common question I get asked is can I use other materials to make this? My answer is generally I, I don't know. When you see me making a prop in a video it's usually my first go. I have not tried making it with other materials. Builds with curves can be a little trickier with rigid materials. Not to say that it can't be done but it may take some adjustments of the pattern to make it more rounded. When you are ready to cut out your parts, I would recommend having the pattern close by. I don't typically mark my material any more than I have to, but you certainly could mark the edges where the angle should go. I just have my pattern next to the piece as I'm cutting it and think before I cut the opposite direction. Angle cuts can be tricky at first, so here's some tips that I could give you to hopefully help you figure it out. Lock your wrist at an angle that you're cutting, try to pull through the parts in as few passes as possible, and use the other hand to help rotate the piece you're cutting. If an angle is off, you can always sand it back or glue back on an edge to cut it again or cut out another piece. Most of the parts have curves on them, so to help with aligning the pieces and preventing seam lines from pulling too hard against each other, I heat form the parts and bend them slightly. With softer foam or thinner foam, this may not be necessary, but the beak and the brow area on this one particularly made me think it would need it. If you get it wrong, you can always heat it up after the fact, you just have to be careful of the seams. Assembly time. I'm using some barge contact cement to join my parts. I lay down a layer of it on the edges that will attach each other and I let it sit until it's no longer wet. This is where the registration marks and heat forming pay off. I slowly tack pieces together following my lines and trying to stay flush with the outside surfaces. I like to arrange my pattern in the general orientation of its parts to act as a guide. You will also notice I like to glue one side up at a time so that my glue doesn't sit for too long and I don't rush myself trying to get them all tacked together.
With both halves glued up, it's time to join them together. This is often a difficult part for some people to master also. I got big hands, so I never really have too difficult of a time, but here's another few tips. Work slowly, trust your registration marks, and know that if you mess up, you can always just heat up the seam line with a heat gun and pull it back apart. If some areas are not perfectly flush, that's okay. You can hit it with a rotary tool or sandpaper later. One of the more difficult parts of pattern making is trying to figure out when to make something part of your base and when to overlay it. This weird ridge over the temple area seemed to me like it would be much easier to make as an overlay than it would to try and like three or four piece it together in this complex curve to make it fit on the base. Because skulls are organic shapes with smooth transitions, fissures, and varying textures, I thought it would be a good idea to use foam clay over my base to smooth out my connections. I add some water to the foam clay in order to make it more pliable and also add water to the surface of the prop to help it stick to it. Once it's how I want it, I let it sit to dry for a day or so. The mask, at least from what I can tell from the images, looks like it has a metallic overlay. Now that my base is finally done, I can add foil to the top to get the shapes using the duct tape in that area and draw the pattern onto the curves. Then I go through the same steps as before, transferring the image onto poster board, tracing it onto materials, and cutting it out. I use 2mm foam for the overlays on this mask. For the overlays, I chose to use super glue to make it easier on myself. You could use contact cement, but you have to be a little bit more careful of spillover. Exposed contact cement will change the texture of your foam and you'll definitely see it in your paint job after. Super glue forces you to be a little more precise, but you have more control over the application. I like to work from the middle out to help me with symmetry.
Once again, I just want to point out that I'm using only a couple of images to interpret this three-dimensional shape. They are close enough for me, but you may get some screen views that give you a better representation of these overlays. I also noticed that there's a recess line in there that I'll, I'll take care of later. Two coats of Plasti Dip. From what I can tell in the picture, it looks like the base of the mask is colored like a skull. Uh, no duh. And then the overlays look silver. With a little white, brown, and black acrylic paint, I dab it onto the surface with a chip brush. I am dry brushing it slowly to build up the color variations and make it a little uneven in spots. You could get a similar effect by painting the skull white and adding thin washes over the top. For me, I feel like dry brushing is a little bit easier and I typically get better results, in my opinion, at least on skulls. If you squint your eyes on the reference image, you can vaguely make out some recesses that go under the overlays. I could have carved them in before I put those down, but for some reason I decided to ignore that until now. I just took a thin Sharpie pen and drew them on instead. If it went too dark, I wiped it off partially with my finger while it was still wet. To get the silver on my overlays, I switched over to a liquid chrome Molotow paint pen. These pens are not cheap, but have incredible finishes. I think this one pen costs like $15. I just draw over the overlays and let it dry. The last step is to put on the strapping. I'm using some one inch elastic banding and two thin pieces of EVA foam. I glue the small pieces of foam onto the elastic, then sandwich the elastic in between the thin foam and the mask itself. To guesstimate the length of the elastic you need, just hold the mask up to your face and stretch the elastic around the back of your head to that point, then cut it.
and we are finished. Here is the end result. I think it turned out pretty good. It's a nice little masquerade type mask, kind of a half mask on the top. And it's a nice little bird skull that could be modified into other things as well as added to helmet bases and other stuff to make something pretty epic and cool. But yeah, maybe you'll try and make one of these masks yourselves and impress your friends with their ability to pull something from the Hogwarts world and make it a reality or something like that. Yeah. Maybe you'll get some. Well, 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 done. well done. And inevitably, they're gonna ask you, how'd you make that? And give them one of these. Tell them, much props. So, I uh, guess I'm just gonna put this on and uh, go do some wizard stuff. Peace out. If you enjoy what I do here on YouTube and want to continue to see builds like this one, please consider joining these awesome people listed here with me over on my Patreon to build a bigger, better, more creative community together.